Hi, my name is Brandi Bryant and I am living with lung cancer. Thank you for taking the time to watch the Lung Cancer Foundation of America's Hope With Answers videos. You've come to the perfect place to learn more from expert patient advocates and dedicated doctors and researchers. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with anyone you know who wants to learn more about living with lung cancer. Hi, my name is Montessa Lee. I am a lung cancer patient advocate, and I'm delighted to be here today with Dr. Sin. Um, so welcome, Dr. Sin. Can I call you Dr. Sin? Of course, of course. It's so great, I'm glad you're here. I um, was a patient that was diagnosed with small cell lung cancer, and I understand that your work revolves around small cell lung cancer. Can you tell us a little bit about your work and research? Absolutely, thank you so much, Montessa. I'm Dr. Triparna Sen. I'm an associate professor at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York. And my work is primarily to understand uh, small cell lung cancer and also to find effective therapeutic regimens uh, for patients with small cell lung cancer. So as you're well aware, small cell lung cancer is one of the most aggressive forms of lung cancer. And uh, the patients usually have very poor prognosis. And there are very limited options in terms of treatments for patients with small cell lung cancer. So what I want to do with the funding that I received uh, from Lung Cancer Foundation of America, and we have come a long way with that, is that I want to understand the biology of small cell lung cancer a little more and also find effective therapies. So one of the characteristics of small cell lung cancer is that it is quite resistant to immunotherapy and patients, they do not benefit as much as you see in other cancer types, even for non-small cell lung cancer, they do not respond as well to immunotherapy as they should. So my goal is to know why they do not respond to immunotherapy to begin with, and then find effective combinatorial regimens or combination therapies to give with these immunotherapeutic regimens then to boost the response of this immune checkpoint blockade. So what we found through our research is that we found that there are several genes that we need for the, our immune system to know cancer cells as foreign, these genes are actually suppressed in small cell lung cancer. And they are suppressed with the help of these genes that we call epigenetic regulators. And I'll give you an example on which my research revolves is LSD1. It's one of the genes that we need for cells to proliferate. So this is higher in small cell lung cancer. So in my work, what I've shown is that uh, inhibiting LSD1 either genetically or with pharmacological inhibition actually can decrease the tumor cells in the body like small cell lung cancer cells we can effectively kill small cell lung cancer cells and when we combine this with immunotherapy in our preclinical mouse model we saw significant benefit in terms of tumor aggression uh, in these mouse models so we think that this could be an effective combination therapy uh, in with treating it with uh, immunotherapeutic regimens. We have also understood uh, the disease a little more. We know which subset of patients may benefit and may not. And we are also working now to understand the mechanism by which these drugs actually work. That sounds wonderful. Sounds like great news for the small cell lung cancer patients. What do you envision in the future? You know, how, how far out are we looking at? One, two, three years? What do you see for that patient diagnosed um, and providing them hope with this research? Yeah, Montessa, I think uh, it is a complex question because small cell, uh, the research was stalled for a very long time. We have only very recently started understanding the biology of small cell lung cancer. And this has largely been possible because of the research funding from organizations like Lung Cancer Foundation of America that has understood that we have to understand the biology of the disease first before we can come up with effective therapy. So I think we have really come a long way. We understand the disease better now, and that's why we have more and more therapies that we are now treating in the lab and also going on to clinical trials. To answer your question, we still have quite a bit to go, and I don't think this will be a one-size-fits-all. So I don't think there will be one therapy that we can give to all patients and they will respond. Uh, so I think we research has come a long way and we are working very hard. Uh, and we are seeing drugs that are actually working in subset of patients. Uh, but I think there's a long way to go before we can actually find effective and durable benefits because there are, um, there are things like targeted therapy resistance. You know, there is therapeutic resistance that comes into play when we are talking about therapies. So we have to understand also therapeutic resistance 
but uh, he's come a long way is what I will say and I think we are making great strides in identifying therapeutic options. Well this sounds you know amazing I'm so excited to hear about this research and if there's one message you could deliver to that patient out there today listening what would it be? Absolutely well uh, research is making great strides we are really working towards understanding lung cancer understanding therapies and targets out there. Organizations such as Lung Cancer Foundation of America and the funding that these organizations provide, they're absolutely instrumental uh, in, towards, uh, you know, taking these uh, battle forward, so to speak. So really invest, really know about the disease more. And I think research is the only way that we can really find effective cures for patients with lung cancer. Thank you so much. Thank you for your work, specifically working with small cell lung cancer. You said it is more aggressive. And um, we just thank you for being um, with us here today. Thank you. I'm very glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.